But with all that money, in my opinion, the first order of business, you absolutely have to re-sign Jesse Bates. <laughs> Welcome to the Jungle Bengals fans, I'm Kyle Phelps and what are we gonna do about these Cincinnati Bengals after they got so close to the pinnacle of the NFL success and came just short of reaching the ultimate goal. I've got some ideas, but before we get into them I'd just like to ask that you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. It really helps my channel out and it helps you to be the first to know when we put out all of our awesome content. Basically, the answer to the question that I posed is, well, the Bengals are going to have to have another great offseason if they want to make it back and win this time. Don't forget, a big part of the reason that they set themselves up to make as huge of a leap as they have is because they've absolutely knocked it out of the park over the last two offseasons. The Bengals really put the pedal to the metal in the 2020 offseason armed with only the base seven draft picks but the number one overall selection. They picked up Joe Burrow, they got T. Higgins, they got Logan Wilson, Akeem Davis Gaither, Khaled Kareem, Hakeem Adeniji, and Marcus Bailey. All guys who contributed in some significant way to their 2021 Super Bowl run. Seriously, what a class. And let's not forget that 2020 free agent class either. Yeah, there's Trey Waynes, um, who has been a huge waste of money. But don't forget that they also brought in DJ Reader and Von Bell in that free agent class too. I'll take the Waynes bust for those two slam dunk picks any day of the week. I don't have to explain much about the 2021 offseason. We know all about it. They knocked it out of the park when they picked up Jamar Chase in the first round and Evan McPherson in the fifth round. Also, shout out to Joseph Osai, who they got in the third round, who I'm expecting we're going to be hearing a lot about in 2022. He got hurt at the beginning of his rookie season, but he was doing really well up to that point. And then, basically, every single major free agent from that year was an absolute slam dunk. Trey Hendrickson, Riley Reef, Cheeto Wouzier, Mike Hilton, Larry Ogunjobi, Eli Apple, Ricardo Allen, Trent Taylor, Joe Batchy. Like, how do you go from 625-1 to the Super Bowl? Well, you have a free agent class like that. So, that. Let's do that again. How do we accomplish that? Well, it helps to have roughly $48 million in available cap space and then call that $58 million because, you know, they're going to cut Trey Waynes and they're going to, you know, after, you know, the dead cap and then the cap savings and ultimately they're going to gain about $10 million of extra cap saving space. So the Bengals don't really operate like this, but they could actually free up even a little bit more cap space if they restructure Trey Hopkins' deal, considering he's got like the 10th highest cap hit on the team this year. But with all that money, in my opinion, the first order of business, you absolutely have to re-sign Jesse Bates. It's just, it's a cultural thing. And that whole locker room wants him to be re-signed. You're setting a real precedent by how you handle Jesse Bates. That's the absolutely number one priority this offseason, and I will hear no other arguments about it. So, yeah, I'd say that his market value is probably roughly somewhere between 14 and $15 million uh, this season. But if he wants to shoot for $18 million to be the highest paid safety in the NFL this year, I think that's worth it. You know, that's, that's a little bit above market value, but I think for what Jesse Bates brings to your football team, I think he's worth every extra penny. Especially if you consider, like I said, freeing up about $10 million from cutting Trey Waynes, just direct all that money towards Jesse Bates, and then, you know, put a couple extra million on top of that to seal the deal, and honestly, why haven't they done it yet? Beyond Bates, though, you can also bring back CJ Uzama, Quentin Spain, Eli Apple, BJ Hill, Larry Ogunjobi, and a smattering of other low-priced free agents, and still have about $30 million in cap space to work with. So I simulated all of that on Fanspeaks Manage the Cap Simulator to see what we could do with all of that extra room. And you know what I did with all that extra room? I brought in Orlando Brown Jr. to play left tackle, Lakin Tomlinson at guard, Ben Jones at center, Traverius Ward to shore up the cornerback depth, and Jacob Martin to shore up the pass rushing depth. 
I brought in five guys, many of which are very high priced free agents, and that's with re-signing basically all of the Bengals' major re-signing needs. So after all of that, in my opinion, you've basically fixed your offensive line. Brown can take over at left tackle for Jonah Williams, who will move over to right tackle, which I think might utilize his skill set a little bit more. Then you plug in Lakin Tomlinson to right guard, with Quentin Spain remaining at left guard. And then Ben Jones can take over at starter at center. And even against Aaron Donald, I think that offensive line gives Joe Burrow at least two extra seconds on the final play of the Super Bowl to get Jamar Chase the game-winning touchdown. And the fact that that's all you need to do just it's it's like a, it's a no-brainer go do it because that play hurts man like re-watching Jamar Chase over and over and over again stuck in time burning the hell out of Jalen Ramsey and then throwing his helmet on the ground in frustration just absolutely shattering that thing and Jalen Ramsey getting up like yeah I didn't get caught it's just, it's so depressing, man. It was right there, but the offensive line couldn't even hold up for a second and a half. But even beyond the offensive line, Bengals still have some, you know, somewhat significant needs that they need to shore up. I had a bit of extra cap space to work with after I signed those three big offensive line names. So I shored up the other two major-ish holes on the roster. I did say to re-sign Eli Apple, so the Traverius Ward signing might look a little weird, but I'm not thinking of Eli Apple as the number two corner again. Please do not do that. He wasn't supposed to be that this year. It was supposed to be Trey Waynes. Look what happened there. I think Traverius Ward can come in and be potentially your number two, and then Eli Apple is like, okay, he only comes in if you absolutely need him. So I guess if Traverius Ward gets hurt, like Trey Wayne's got hurt, then you're kind of screwed. But I also attacked that a little bit more in the draft. We'll talk about that in a minute. Finally, I brought in Jacob Martin from the Houston Texans because the Bengals could really use some rotational pass rush help. And like I said, don't sleep on Joseph Osai. I think him coming back is going to make a big difference. But you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket if you don't have to. It'd be really nice to have like Trey Hendrickson and Osai working out and you have another rotational pass rusher there. Now the big thing about Martin is he's pretty much a pass rush specialist. He's not really going to do a whole lot more for your football team. So he only really cost about $2.6 million per year. And I, I signed him after I made all the other big signings. I'm like, okay, well I still have a little bit of cap space left. And, you know, what, what can we use this on? Let's bring in Jacob Martin. So with an offseason that looks something like this, I can see the Bengals making it back to the Super Bowl in 2022 and winning it this time. Now, I know since 1973, only the 2018 Patriots have made it back to the Super Bowl and won it immediately after losing it. But I really seriously think that this Bengals team already looked basically unstoppable at points last year despite being really green behind the ears. And if they fix that offensive line and essentially run it back at basically every other position on the side for some depth pieces that we talked about, then what reason is there to think that they can't go win it this year? Joe Burrow is already passing Mahomes' daddy. They slaughtered the Ravens and Steelers both times they played them. The Browns is the Browns. So what do the Bengals really have to be scared of? Oh, wait. Ah, that'll be fine. But what do you guys think? Am I nuts for thinking the Bengals can run it back and win the Super Bowl with the right offseason moves? Did you have any moves that you particularly liked or disliked that I made? Did I miss anything that you thought was like really super important? Let me know in the comments below and I'll feature the best ones in my next video. Like this one from Chuckles2340 who said, Who Day Nation will be back in the Super Bowl. No question. This was the best Bengals season of all time until next year's season, that is. There's no reason why they can't, Chuckles. Joe Burrow is only going to get better, and Mike Brown sounds ready to give Joe Burrow all the help that he really needs. But until then, y'all can always catch more of what I do at KylePhelps92 on Twitter, Facebook.com slash TheFelps, my Bengals coverage at ATBNetwork.com slash Cincinnati Bengals, the Battle of Ohio podcast on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, and right here if you subscribe. But that's all I got for this week, guys. I'll leave y'all, as always, with a hootie!